Welcome to our worship service at uh, First Unitarian Society of Ithaca. Here we gather, nurturing our connections, seeking inspiration, and hopeful for light and health as we look toward spring's beginning. My name is Jeff Dunn, and I am the celebration associate for today. Thank you so much for joining us, and welcome to everyone. Whether you are newcomers or longtime attendees, members of the Ithaca community, or watching from elsewhere, we are so glad you've cho chosen to join us today. Please check your email, our Facebook page, and our website for more information about how to create connections. If you'd like to receive weekly updates describing opportunities for engagement, please email the request to the office at office at uuithaca.org. That's office at uuithaca.org. Newcomers are especially invited to visit our website and complete a newcomer form on the homepage so that we can get to know you and you can learn more about us. Now, speaking of newcomers, the first in the NICE sessions begin this afternoon. NICE stands for Newcomers Inspired, Connected, and Engaged. And there'll be sessions uh, today and for the next two Sundays. You can RSVP by uh, emailing the office at uuithaca.org if you'd like to request to join. And if you are considering membership, uh, this is a required step in that process. Also, the anti-racist ministry team invites you to join them on Tuesday night, March 9th at 6 p.m. to watch the award-winning film 13th, followed by a discussion on Zoom. The film traces the exploitation of African Americans from slavery to today's system of mass incarceration. You can RSVP to Peggy McKernan. Her email is peggy.ithaca at gmail.com for the Zoom link. And one other announcement, the Board of Trustees will meet to this coming Wednesday, uh, March 10th at 6.30 p.m. You can find the Zoom information in the weekly newsletter or you can contact the church office for the Zoom link. Our service this morning has been pre-recorded, but we look forward to sharing the service broadcast on Sunday morning and seeing you at the live coffee hour that follows. Our opening words this morning are by Reverend Kendall Gibbons. Out of a community of diverse heritage and belief, we come together to share our hope and to create good in the world. The teachers of all traditions and times have taught us that we are called to mercy, generosity, and mutual care, and that to be good is to serve. We know that there can be no enduring happiness for humanity so long as suffering and want go unrelieved, until all may be sheltered, none of us is truly at home. May the power of our various faiths sustain us in this work, that we may be the hands of holy creativity and justice, and together build a better world. Whoever you are, whoever you love, wherever you are on your spiritual journey, you are welcome here. Here you belong. As we light this chalice, we make a commitment to stay curious, to ask questions and make observations, to learn about ourselves and how we interact with the world. We make a commitment to wonder each day, to practice gratitude each day, to learn and be inspired. We make a commitment to Unitarian Universalism, the values we hold together, the promises we make to each other, we make a commitment to change for the future, to put love into action, to work for equity and justice, to promise to build a better world.
Good morning, friends. March has arrived and with it a focus on commitment. And today starts our commitment to the eight principles of UU Photo Challenge. So keep your eye out for how you can participate. So what is commitment? What does it mean to be committed to something? When you look up the word commitment in the dictionary, the definition you find is, commitment means to be dedicated to something like a cause, activity, group, or person. You also find lots of other words that mean kind of the same thing. Words like faithfulness, devotion, loyalty, promise. Our faith is a living tradition. We describe eight sources of our living tradition instead of one holy book or one prophet. And when we learn new things, we expect our faith to change. We vote on adding new sources and new principles as well as changing them. We are committed to keeping an open mind about anything that might challenge or change our faith. One of the ways our faith guides us into becoming a people of commitment is by telling us everything changes. So be ready to never stop growing. Let's open up our packets now that are dated March 7th or 3-7 and see what's inside of them. And then I'm going to tell you a story. What did you find in your packet? I found this piece of paper shaped like a flower. Hmm. I wonder what this has to do with commitment. I invite you to hold on to and examine your flower while I tell you my story. Don't worry, it's a short story. A woman dreamed she walked into a brand new shop in the marketplace and to her surprise found God behind the counter. What do you sell here? She asked. Everything your heart desires, said God. Hardly daring to believe what she was hearing, the woman decided to ask for the best things a human being could wish for. I want peace of mind and love and happiness and wisdom and freedom from fear, she said. Then, as an afterthought, she added, not just for me, for everyone on earth. God smiled. I think you've got me wrong, my dear, God said. We don't sell fruits here, only seeds. I want you to take a look now at the flowers you're holding in your hands and see if you notice anything special about them. Do you notice that the paper is kind of bumpy? And if you look closely, you might be able to see that within this paper are tiny seeds. Take your flower, soak it overnight, and then plant it into one of the pots that came in your UU crate this month. I invite you to decorate your pots with what it is you wish to grow. And then you need to commit to taking care of and cultivating these flowers, to watering them, but not too much, to giving them sunshine, to transplanting them to a bigger pot and then out into the ground once spring has actually arrived. 
Before our story, we were talking about some other words that we can also use when talking about commitment. Words like faithfulness and dedication. I want to add another word to that, one that I'm pretty sure you've heard here at Fuse It before. That word is covenant. What does covenant mean? A covenant is a promise, but it isn't just any promise. It is a sacred promise. It is a commitment that we make to one another. Did you know that here at Fuse It, we have our very own covenant that we created to help us to remember the commitments we have made to one another about how to be in community together? This is what our covenant says. We covenant to be together in community, guided by love, and respect. Be open, friendly, and welcoming to all. To be engaged in congregational life. To communicate compassionately, directly, and honestly. To listen deeply and kindly to each other. To believe in others' best intentions. To support and inspire each other's quest for truth and meaning to acknowledge, respect, and value our differences, and to work to serve our community's shared goals. What a beautiful promise to make to one another, to commit to. And I'm going to guess that right now, some of you are feeling worried about the changes that we have coming up in this community. You've heard that Reverend Margaret will be leaving Fusit at the end of the church year in June. And maybe you have questions and concerns. Reverend Margaret and I are going to be available today at 2.15 to speak to you, the children and youth of this community, about these changes and about the commitment of this community to each of you to be together in community, guided by love, just like it says in our covenant, as we navigate these changes together and continue to grow. Each week we create a space in our worship service together for a communal spiritual practice of holding one another's joys and sorrows. We know that our lives are woven of the two, joy and sorrow, and many other emotions in between. And in this time together, we lift up the names and the circumstances that call for our joy and our celebration and for our concern and our sorrow. This week, I want to lift up a joy and gratitude for FUSIT member Juliana Garcia, who has been essential in the formation of the Mutual Aid Tompkins group. She is a fierce and compassionate person who has helped that organization grow in this past year, and we are so grateful that she is here. And I lift up the brave souls who are working in healthcare and food service, sanitation, other public places, our grocery stores, to help us stay safe and cared for during this pandemic. And I lift up all those who are struggling with illness of the body or the mind, or who are struggling to overcome addiction or unsafe home lives. May they, may all of us, find strength and courage and peace. If you're watching our service live in its live format, I invite you to type your joy or sorrow or other, other hope into the chat box to speak it into this shared space or to simply silently name those people who have been on your heart lately or speak it aloud into the universe. Together, may we trust that these joys and these sorrows, that they are held in our community, that we are called to care for one another and to lift up these prayers through our service and our compassion toward one another. At the beginning of our live coffee hour each week, we will have time for the sharing of joys and sorrows. There will be someone to facilitate those conversations and we will once again hold space for each other and for all that we carry with us. Now holding in our hearts the joys and the sorrows of our lives, let us continue in some moments of reflection and prayer. 
I offer these words by my colleague, Tim Haley. Amid all the noise in our lives, we take this moment to sit in silence, to give thanks for another day, to give thanks for those in our lives who have brought us warmth and love, to give thanks for the gift of life. We know that we are on our pilgrimage here, but for a brief moment in time, let us open ourselves here, now, to the process of becoming more whole, of living more fully, of giving and forgiving more freely, of understanding more completely the meaning of our lives here on this earth. So may it be. Amen and blessed be. Gonna keep on moving forward. Keep on moving forward. Keep on moving forward. Never turning back. Never turning back. Sigamos adelante. Siempre adelante, siempre adelante, sin volver atrás, sin volver atrás. Gonna keep on loving boldly, keep on loving boldly. Keep on loving boldly, never turning back, never turning back. Amaremos con pasión, siempre con pasión, siempre con pasión. Gonna reach across our border, reach across our border, reach across our border, never turning back, never turning back. We won't see from day. Never turning back. Never turning back.
Each week, we take an offering to sustain the important ministries and programs of this congregation and its presence in Ithaca. The giving information will appear on your screen in a moment during the offertory music. Giving to the plate is important. It's a symbol of our gratitude for this service and our ongoing commitment to support the work of this church. Please take a moment and give through either the text option or the giving button on the homepage of our website. May these gifts bring about connection, inspiration, and engagement within these walls and beyond. Our reading this morning is by my colleague, Reverend Angela Herrera. This is a prayer for all the travelers, for the ones who start out in beauty, who fall from grace, who step gingerly, looking for the way back. And for those who are born into the margins, who travel from one liminal space to another, crossing boundaries in search of center. This is a prayer for the ones whose births are a passing from darkness to darkness, who all their lives are drawn toward the light and keep moving. And for those whose journeys are a winding road that begins and ends in the same place. Though only when the journey is completed do they finally know where they are. For all the travelers, young and old, aching and joyful, weary and full of life, the ones who are here and the ones who are not here, the ones who are like you and they're all like you, and the ones who are different, for in some ways we each travel alone. This is a prayer for traveling mercies and sure-footedness and clear vision for bread, for your body and your spirit, for water, for your safe travel, for your safe arrival, and for everyone you see along the way. The American author and writer Star Starhawk once wrote, we are all longing to go home to some place we have never been a place half remembered and half envisioned. We can only catch glimpses of it from time to time. Community. Somewhere there are people to whom we can speak with passion without having the words catch in our throats. Somewhere a circle of hands will open to receive us. Eyes will light up as we enter. Voices will celebrate with us whenever we come into our own power. Community means strength, that joins our strength to do the work that needs to be done. Arms to hold us when we falter, a circle of healing, a circle of friends, some place where we can be free. In this piece, Starhawk speaks about what it feels like when we come into our own power. And I think that for some of us, that is when we're in community with others. For some of us, it's when we feel connected to that still small voice within ourselves. For others, it may be the way we feel when we remember how small and insignificant we are amidst the magnificence of the natural world. And for many of us who are Unitarian Universalists, we might have this feeling when we are in a space of religious freedom. 
Perhaps this is the feeling we had when we were first welcomed into a UU congregation, or the way we felt when we were told that we are loved for all of who we are. This is a sense that we are held and powerful and free all at once. And it can be simultaneously exciting and terrifying. Maybe this is why we like to come together in community. Even in the new way we're doing this, and it's not even new anymore. We've been doing this for a while. This online, this Zooming. But in the realm of the history of humankind, the way we are gathering this this, these days, it's, it's very new and different. And there's still this sense of unity that we feel and a commitment we have to be in community with other people who are wondering about the same big questions that we are wondering about. There's a unity, a commitment that comes from knowing that our struggles aren't all that different, that we travel together, that we are free together. In our reading this morning, my colleague Angela Herrera explores the ways of the traveler, the way of stepping gingerly, sometimes moving fast, other times moving with care and intention. And she acknowledges that life is sometimes this winding road that begins and ends in the same place, that for some of us, it is a journey from darkness to darkness. She reminds us that all of us, each of us, is separate and united, an individual and a part of greater community made up of all of humankind. Indeed, whether we are going someplace or staying home, we are still on a journey. And some of that journey is within our own mind and our own heart. Some of it is bound up in our relationships with others and ultimately with ourselves. And some of that journey happens when we move outside our comfort zone into a place that makes our palms sweat, our heart beat fast. Some of that journey is what we've chosen. Some are pieces that have been chosen for us. Some have been chosen by circumstances or experiences that we didn't want. In that moment, In that moment when we find ourselves with the choice of which path to choose, of whether or not to listen to that still small voice, of the angel and the devil on our shoulders, that moment of the pros and cons list, the moment of choice, of wondering, of commitment, what guides us? What is it that helps you find your way forward? Do you keep on moving forward because you're being propelled in that direction? Do you keep moving forward because you're being pulled? Is it easier than stopping? Do you keep moving forward because you're committed to a destination? Do you keep moving forward because you're strengthened by your progress? What is it that propels you forward? Are you moving out of fear? or out of love? What is it that helps you pivot when you need to, to step gingerly? What are the touchstones for you on that journey, the breadcrumbs you leave to return, the pieces that you need to bring forward with you to the next right thing? How do you decide what comes next? And is that decision only yours or Are you bound up with others on this journey? And we find ourselves back at community. Our Unitarian Universalist Association president, the Reverend Susan Frederick Gray says this. She says, we sometimes wrongly say that it is the absence of a creed that's most important to who we are as Unitarian Universalists. This is wrong. Any one of us could practice religious freedom at home on Sunday mornings or without tuning in to YouTube. 
We could practice religious freedom all day long, every day, and never come into community. It is covenant that brings us out of isolation. Covenant that brings us out of selfish concerns, out of individualism, to join ourselves to something greater, to become part of a community that is working to practice love, to dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge and wisdom together, to find better ways to live our lives and live in the world. Becoming part of a community is practicing how to love. This is what we are doing here. We are practicing. We're asking these questions of ourselves and of each other, of our elders and our children, day in and day out. These big questions. How do we live our values in our lives? How do we make the right choices? How do we leave, lead authentic lives of integrity? We are practicing living into those answers together in love. In her book, The Next Right Thing, Emily Freeman writes about what helps us to make decisions in our lives. She writes about tuning into our intuition, listening deeply, reflecting on the ways that the divine shows up in our decisions, to consider the role of our soul and our heart. What role do they play? And she invites us to ask ourselves one question when we're faced with a decision. Am I being led by love or pushed by fear? Am I being led by love or pushed by fear? In the process of considering what is the next right thing to do, in the process of deciding which way to go, in the process of discerning and searching and committing, Am I being led by love or pushed by fear? Some have said that the feeling of fear, that feeling fear and doing it anyway is the definition of courage. But I would argue that courage is deeper than that. I would argue that courage is listening deeply to what the fear is telling you and searching also for the love that is leading you. Maybe love is leading you somewhere scary. Maybe church is scary. Maybe visiting your friend who's sick is scary. Maybe coming out to your family is scary. Maybe going to that recovery meeting is scary. And maybe at the center of all those things, is love. And if love is leading you, then maybe that's okay. But if fear is pushing you, maybe it's time to pause and to listen deeply for the voice of love, of community, of belonging, of shared humanity. So I invite all of us into a space of living the questions. I invite us into a place of practicing how to love. I invite us all to a place of finding that balance between who we are and what we need and who is traveling at our side. What do you wish for your fellow travelers? And do you wish the same for yourself? What is the covenant you share? How do you commit yourself to that promise? Are you being led by love or pushed by fear? To what are you committing your life? What helps you to keep on moving forward into a life of authenticity, of purpose, of belonging? Will you choose love? Will you choose fear? May we all be led by love and may we have the courage to follow. So may it be. Amen. And blessed be.
As we extinguish our chalices, we do not let go of the hope and courage that they represent. We go forth from this place carrying with us our sense of wonder and imagination, our yearning for a world made fair and honest and loving. We carry our promise, our commitment to work for justice, our compassion for all, our love and our courage out into this beautiful and broken world. Our service has ended. Let our true service now begin. Go in peace.